Uh, good afternoon and um, welcome. This is the um, Assembly Committee on Rules. Today is Tuesday, June 21st. Uh, we uh, are convened today for uh, two items. Uh, we have a consent agenda, including some bill referrals. Uh, we will take that up when we achieve a quorum. Uh, we are also here under a regular agenda uh, to hear um, and consider uh, SCA 14 by Senator Wolk. Um, we do not yet have a quorum, but we can uh, uh, begin the procedure um, as a um, essentially a subcommittee um, so that uh, we do not uh, delay those who are here uh, while other um, uh, members of the Rules Committee are in hearings elsewhere and will be joining us shortly. Um, so um, with that, uh, let me invite Senator Wolk to the witness table um, for um, her presentation on SCA 14. Senator Wolk, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. I'm here today to present SCA 14 to you, which is a uh, concern. Uh, Senator Wolk, can I? Yes, uh, yes, yes, we yes. do have a quorum now, so I want to establish that first so we get uh, that done. Um, apologize. Absolutely. But better to stop you right at the beginning than. <laughs> That's true. Uh, roll call, please. Gordon? Here. Chang? Arambula? Here. Bro? Here. Cooley? Here. Gomez? Holden? Jones? Here. Quirk? Here. Rodriguez, Waldron, can we have a quorum? Uh, quorum's been established. Uh, Senator Wolk, uh, please continue. And again, sorry for the interruption. All right, thank you. Mr. Chair and members, I'm here to present SCA 14, uh, which uh, is concerns legislative transparency. And uh, there is a companion measure that I'd like to mention that is uh, authored by uh, Assemblymember Gordon, which is the implementation measure to the uh, SCA 14, that is AB 884. Um, I'll begin with SCA 14. Quote on page 5 No bill may be passed in either House until the bill in the form to be voted on has been made available to the public by publishing it on the Internet for at least 72 hours before the vote in that House. This is the language from SCA 14, as recently amended, and it's before you today. It is the core of the measure. It's the reason we're here. It, was, it is what I and others have been advocating for many years. It requires a full 72 hours of public review before either house passes any bill. It applies to the House of Origin, the second house, and the concurrence vote, if there is one. It is absolutely clear and without doubt. SCA 14 provides one special exemption to the 72-hour rule, and that has to do with an emergency that's declared by the governor. We also provide in this bill a change to an antiquated rule in the Constitution that dates back to the horse and buggy days. That rule says that a bill must be in print 31 days after it is introduced before it can be acted upon. This was done so the bills could be delivered to all parts of the state by any means of transportation, stagecoaches, horseback, boats and trains, no doubt. That, of course, is no longer the case, and the public can instantly see the legislation the moment it's posted online on the Internet. So we made this change, a small one but an important one, to allow our committees to hear bills after just 15 days but make no change to the 31-day rule for the House to pass the bill. This change will allow the legislature to adjust our schedule to get working on bills sooner. It will also reduce the schedule overcrowding that might result from the new 72-hour rule in the House of Origin this measure creates. SCA 14 does the following in addition to the 72-hour public review and the 15-day wait. And those are listed on page, what I'm about to read is on page 3 and 4. SCA 14 requires the legislature to make audiovisual recordings of all open and public legislative proceedings in the state capitol or anywhere else where an action or vote is taken. 
SCA 14 requires the legislature to make all reasonable effort to make audiovisual recordings of any other proceedings, such as informational hearings, held outside the state capitol where no action or vote is taken. It requires all audiovisual recordings to be made promptly available to the public. It requires the legislature to make reasonable efforts to broadcast live, online, all proceedings of the legislature. It guarantees the right of individuals to make their own audiovisual recordings of legislative proceedings. It requires the legislature to provide sufficient funds to implement these provisions. 884, which is the companion statute authored by Assemblymember Gordon, which is now pending action in the Senate, makes additional reforms to improve legislative transparency. It requires legislative counsel to post all recordings within one business day in a retrievable and perceivable format for public use for the entire biennial session and the two following biennial sessions. It requires legislative counsel to archive all recordings for at least 20 years in a perceivable format and make the recordings available to the public. It repeals the prohibition on using recordings of legislative proceedings for political or commercial purposes. Instead, the, bu the bill would allow the use of such recordings by the public without limitation or imposing a fee. 884 repeals the law that would allow the state to make a claim of copyright on legislative materials. Instead, the bill will codify that all recordings and other legis legislative materials are in the public domain. Members, I have some history on this, along with Assemblymember Olson, who has partnered with me in 2013, authoring SCA 10, and I with her on ACA 1 this session, both of which focused on the 72-hour review requirement. These efforts, although supported by many, never moved past any committee. We've made great progress since then. So what has changed? Well, first, there's been growing interest here within the legislature from both sides of the aisle to increase transparency and to curb the practice known as gut and amend, where bills receive, as you know, very little public review before a vote. We've also moved to televise more and more of our hearings. At the same time, it's also fair to say that we wouldn't be here today were it not for the effort of former Senator Sam Blakesley and Dr. Charles Munger, who gathered signatures to put, the ballot, put on the ballot a measure to do most of what you have, we have before you. In fact, I introduced SCA 14 at Senator Blakesley's request to give us, the legislature, one last try to correct the, the errors identified after the circulation of the initiative and to respond to public comment. Before putting in the language, before putting language in concrete through the initiative, I believe we have an obligation to try and get the details right in a public process. Our Ledge Council identified 10 areas of concern in the initiative, and I believe we've done that. I believe from a public interest perspective, according, uh, responding to public comment and with consultation, a great deal of consultation of, leg of our legislative council, the office expert in the legislative process and responsible for providing the public access to legislative information, including the new requirements for AV recordings we're placing with them, we have put forward, we believe, a better approach, which is more certain to provide the transparency that we are seeking without the unintended consequences of an initiative that might be drafted without this public discussion or consultation. In total, we believe that the legislative package informed by the, that is, SCA 10 and AB 884, which is not in front of us today for discussion or action, it is in front of the Senate, informed by the work of, legislative, of initiative proponents, provides a stronger, more clear, and more comprehensive solution to the issue one that will survive the test of time and any legal challenges that have rendered other initiatives inoperable or ineffective. We believe this merits the committee's support as well as the support of the initiative proponents and all those who have been working on this issue throughout the years. I ask for your I vote. Thank you. Let me ask uh, for witnesses um, 
in support? Mr. Chair and members, Jim Ewart with the California Newspaper Publishers Association. Uh, we have also been a longtime supporter of um, these efforts over the years, uh, beginning with Senator Wolk's uh, first try and, and also with some of the woman Olson's. Um, we think that this is uh, a strong effort and it's getting stronger uh, each day. The most recent amendments um, add two critical components um, to the constitutional amendment. The first being that it makes it clearer uh, when the 72 hour period uh, is triggered and also uh, makes clear that the bill cannot become law unless that 72 hour period is recognized. Um, and in both houses, I might add. Uh, there was some concern that uh, the, the previous version only applied in one house, um, and I think it's clear now that uh, that 72-hour uh, period applies in both. More critical, I think, uh, for, for us is the idea that individuals uh, attending these hearings have a right to attend the hearings. That's going to be in the Constitution, and it also will allow uh, them to record the hearings on their own. Uh, independently provide more accurate uh, recordings of, of what they uh, observed when they were there. Um, and that is uh, very critical for journalists who, um, who are at these hearings. Um, we think that SCA 14 uh, uh, increases public participation in the process and it strengthens the integrity of the process in doing so. And for these reasons, we respectfully request an I vote. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members, Paul Smith with the Rural Counties Association. Uh, we have long been uh, supportive of Senator Woke's efforts uh, in the past, and we are so pleased to see that this bill looks so much more like the introduced version of SCA 14 and the previous versions that, uh, that she has authored. Uh, many of you served in local government before coming to the legislature. You're very familiar with the Brown Act, which requires 72 uh, hours of posting and uh, a chill uh, before a Board of Supervisors or any other municipality can uh, act on a measure or consider an item. We feel that is uh, clearly appropriate for the legislature as well. We think the Brown Act protects and strengthens both the membership inside um, a legislative body as well as the public outside. So we are in strong support. Pleased to see this bill uh, and this measure getting stronger every day, as Mr. Ewert said, and appreciate the author for her courage in this fight over the years that she's been in this legislature and ask that this uh, measure obviously make it to the ballot where the voters will have a, a consideration of it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other witnesses in support? Before I go to opposition, I'd like to take care of a small housekeeping item. We do have a consent agenda. Uh, there are a set of bill referrals that have support on both sides. Um, uh, Ms. Chang, uh, Mr. Cooley uh, moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Chang? Aye. Chang, aye. Arambula? Aye. Arambula, aye. Bro? Aye. Bro, aye. Cooley? Cooley, aye. Gomez, Holden? Here. Aye. Holden, aye on cons aye. Sorry. Jones, Quirk, Rodriguez, aye. Waldron. Rodriguez, aye. I'm sorry. Rodriguez, aye. Motion passes. That motion passes, and uh, Mr. Holden, we were able to get both your attendance and your vote <laughs> in one fell swoop. We appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> we'll now move to uh, the opposition. Uh, if they would please come forward. Mr. Chair, uh, before he begins, um, I would like to make some, at your, whenever you think it's appropriate, um, the comments on the appro on the amendments that we're looking at for AB 884. I would suggest probably before we start the opposition, so if you want to make those comments now. All right. Um, it was conveyed to us recently, uh, I believe late last week, that the proponents uh, might be willing to withdraw their measure if the legislative proposal included clearer language on the 42 hours at the House of Origin, the ability for individuals to record and broadcast open hearings and more transparency by subjecting legislative budgets to Open Records Act. Uh, in addition to the amendments that you see in front of you, uh, a set of amendments has been shared with the proponents that would add implementing language that would, to aid it for, that would mirror Bag Bagley Keene uh, on individual recording and broadcasts that is what we, um, that's what we hold ourselves to in our hearings. And again, uh, would add legislative budgets to the Open Records Act. So we believe that would make uh, the proposal far superior to the initiative. Um, 
for a number of reasons. And those are amendments that um, I will be moving in when we talk in the Senate. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Dr. Munger.